Hello students, welcome to our new chapter that is on the electric vehicle auxiliaries. Right, so in the auxiliaries we will see about the uh, systems which are actually required for the vehicle but they are not the primary sources or the primary components of the vehicle. Right, the battery is a primary component, the motor or the propulsion system is a primary component but other things such as the temperature controlling device or we can say the battery charging devices all these things are the auxiliary systems of our electric vehicle so in this chapter we will learn about the EV auxiliaries and we will see which are the components which are required for the vehicle and which are required for what purpose in our electric vehicle so let's start with EV auxiliaries first basically we will see a simple diagram of an EMS that is energy management system right the energy which is being generated or which are being stored in our battery or whichever way we are transferring the energy in our electric vehicle either if we are using the battery or fuel cell or ultra capacitor or any other component such as ultra flywheel so that energy needs to be managed in some way in the case of the electric vehicle and for that management we will have to use some electronic systems with number of sensors so in this schematic diagram you can see that the input comes from the sensor and the output is shown on either the indication screen or the output is directly given to the components for which we are getting the input such as the speed if we want to control the speed of the motor then the output will directly go to our propulsion system it will not go to driver screen then driver select the proper output it is time consuming so what electronic system does is that it gets the input from the sensor and it gives the output that is required for the vehicle running to our propulsion system or electric motor in this case of the electric vehicle right so let's see which are the sensors that we have shown here there are number of sensors first is for the uh, battery temperature and battery voltage sensor also battery current sensor so all the three things are for the battery for the battery reading or for the battery condition always three things will be measured that is temperature voltage and current of the battery from that we will know how much the discharging or the charging of the battery is in there or how much energy is stored in the battery next is the ambient temperature measurement converter temperature measurement which means the power converter or the DC to DC converter that we talked about in the earlier videos that temperature will be measured motor temperature sensor all the temperatures will always be stanched to keep the safety of our vehicle so that the temperature does not get too much and it does not overheat the system speed sensor will sense the speed of the vehicle or the wheels the accelerometer will sense the acceleration of the vehicle the power up switch that will search the power that is being applied to our vehicle the control selection the control that needs to be given to our propulsion system or whichever the controlling system that we have obtained in the uh, vehicle that will be controlled with the help of the selection sensor so the force of the brake pedal and the accelerator pedal whenever the driver applies the force on that pedal the force will be sensed by the sensor and according to that force the sensor will get the energy from our battery or whichever energy storage device we are using and that energy will further be supplied to our electric motor so these are the basic sensors or we can say the input for the energy management system the out output of the energy management system is first the battery charging control right the charging has to be controlled otherwise the battery will get overcharged and that thing is not feasible for the battery it can damage the battery it can reduce the voltages of the battery it can reduce the capacity of the battery so always the charging has to be controlled whenever required only at that time the charging should be applied the lighting control will be done as an output the lighting in the vehicle interior or exterior will be controlled the temperature control will be done by the input of the different temperature sensors 
the propulsion controller will control the speed of the motor whichever speed we require for the vehicle soc is the state of charge right the meaning of the soc word is state of charge that is the charging state of our battery how much battery is in charging state and that is the value of our battery charging and if the another charging is required or not can be seen or can be learned from that the range prediction which gives us the prediction of the range the vehicle can run before charging the battery the speedometer and the odometer will give us the reading of the rpm and the kilometers that the vehicle runs based on the speed sensor and the text display anything that needs to be uh, indicated or needs to be worn to the driver will be displayed via a text display on the dashboard so these are the outputs of our energy management system next thing is the barrack battery characteristics and the chargers right so first the battery characteristics and the chargers to learn the characteristics of the battery we first need to see how the battery is discharging and how the battery is charging and from that characteristics we will decide which type of battery chargers we have to be used in our battery and how the charging needs to be applied on the battery and that will depend on the different charging and discharging characteristics of our electric vehicle right so first we will see about the discharging and charging characteristics only for the four batteries that is uh, lead acid nickel cadmium nickel metal hydride and the lithium ion battery we will see or we will compare all these four batteries for the charging and discharging characteristics and after that we will decide which type of battery chargers can be used in our vehicle so first let's see the discharging characteristics of the vehicle so in this discharging characteristics you can see one graph in which you can see the graph is cell voltage versus the discharge time graph now there are different values of the graph given for the different value of c now c is the representation value of the current which is been generated or which is been supplied from the battery so the value of the c gives us the indication of how much current is supplied so one c it means the normal current but when the value of c changes the value of current that is been supplied from the battery changes so as you can see that when the value of c increases the discharge time decreases right the graph comes in towards the left side which means the timing for the discharge decreases when the value of c that is the current representation decreases right so the time decreases it is as simple as that how how amount of the energy that we consume it will affect the discharge time right also you can see that the cell voltage will also decrease with the time or with the current we have been consumed you can see the cell voltage will decrease again if the value of c increases which means if we are consuming extra current then also the voltage value will decrease so this is simply indication of the discharge time voltage and current of the battery this is again one another graph for the discharging characteristics of the battery in which as i already told you we have discussed about the four batteries but the graph is of the usable capacity in the percentage versus the discharge rate that is c that is the current rate that we are using right so you can see that the usable capacity of the nickel metal hydride is at topmost curve you can see that it gives us the discharge rate that is higher compared to other four batteries the lithium ion has the lowest discharge rate compared to other batteries but with the different other advantages the lithium ion battery gives us the better performance you can see that the nickel cadmium and the lead acid battery are in between the curves of the other two batteries 
so this shows us the capacity of the battery decreases as the discharge rate increases right the general discharge rate will be below 1 the discharge rate will not be more than 1 in most of the cases so in that case the battery discharge will be proper one another graph which shows us very important factor that is battery discharging characteristics based on the temperature right we do not take this in the account in our normal vehicles but in case of the electric vehicle the temperature plays an important factor right such as if the temperature is very low in the battery so in that condition the battery will not get the proper discharging because the at the lower temperature the internal resistance of the battery will be higher so because of the higher internal resistance the discharge rate will be reduced so power will be reduced at the very high temperature of the battery the deterioration of the battery will start so because of that the capacity of the battery will decrease once again so one important factor for the battery nowadays is the thermal management of the battery as well and also we are learning or we are doing the thermal management of the batteries in the electrical vehicle right now as well to get the value of the battery discharging you can see here at the 0 degree celsius the curve is here best curve you are getting is around at ambient temperature that is 20 degree celsius and at the 20 degree celsius you are getting the higher cell voltage as well as the discharge rate as the temperature decreases the discharge rate and the voltage decreases so this was the basic discharging characteristics of the battery in the next lecture we will see the charging characteristics until then thank you so much